Still good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's nice to meet you all, and thanks to Fix for giving us the opportunity to provide um, what we feel is much edu much needed education and knowledge to Europe. Uh, as much as whether we like it or we don't, um, I specialise in market launches, and normally what happens in the US we sort of catch on around sort of ten years later uh, across here. So um, we want to. I've, put a team together, um, which we don't want to try to sell lasers, which sounds silly, but if we deliver the education right and we deliver the knowledge right, they, they pretty much sell itself. So um, first and foremost, we're a research and development company. Um, we have 21 US FDA market clearances. So if people aren't quite aware of that, the US FDA are, are sort of like a um, the highest level of clinical evidence that you can get in Europe. CE marking has always been a little bit flaky over the years, even though it's changing now. So we wanted to try to bring something to market which gives um, clinicians, doctors, practitioners the reassurance that it does what we say it does. So a lot of our research is, uh, it's randomized, it's um, placebo controlled, it's double blind, so we use LED as a placebo, uh, and it's multi-center. So it's very neutral, gold standard information, and there's some extremely good technologies in the market. And our approach is not telling everybody that you need to buy ours, but ours is to try to educate the market so that you know what each one does, and then you make your decision based on what is right for your practice. So non-thermal laser works very much biologically. So the lower you go down in wavelength of laser, the more energy per photon you deliver. So when you get to visible light, we have the power so low that it eradicates all levels of heat and it creates a biological effect at a cellular level. So that's what we want to try to do here. We want to try to provide uh, our bodies with the inspiration to do what they were able to do when we were younger. But as we get older and our mitochondria becomes less viable, we lose the ability to fix ourselves. So to an extent, the laser doesn't do anything. It's just empowering our body or giving the inspiration to our body to fix itself. So. It will work in tandem with lots of other technologies, so it very much depends on the clinic what you um, what you want to get for your practice. But we're lucky because we've got since 2002 our first FDA clearance in neck and shoulder pain. The Americans have got like you know we started in 1996, so that's 27 years worth of experience at 21 US FDA market clearances, and we want to develop our own experts in the European field. We're lucky to have Jake Cook in the UK, and we've got Martin. Um, in Sweden, but we really still want to utilize our US doctors because they have so much knowledge and they've got so much to share with you all. Dr. Rob Silverman I've known now for about four years and Rob tends to come across every couple of years. He very much helps us with our educational programs so that um, he brings those 12 years of knowledge to us over here to try to get our clients up and running very quickly. And He's wrote a couple of um, fantastic books. He was a principal investigator in a neck and shoulder study, so he's very well versed in the research side of it. Um, but he comes across in a very clear way, in an inspirational way. So please forgive the fact he's actually from New York. Um, sorry, Westchester, it's a bit north of New York. So um, I'd love to um, introduce him now. Um, as I said, he's become a very close friend as well as a business associate. So I'd like to take that opportunity to introduce you to Dr. Rob Silverman. Good day, everyone. How are you? You guys are wild and crazy. I can see this. This is going to be great. I feel like going off and coming back on. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're from. I'm really excited to be here. I have 35 minutes with you. And I'm trying to illuminate you on the idea of why you want to utilize non-thermal, low-level laser. For me, laser revolutionized my practice. It revolutionized the way I treated patients. And as you can plainly see, it helped me physically because I do suffer from congenital torticollis. So I was a chiropractic patient well before I was a chiropractor. I was breaking down. 10 years into practice, you know, my teachers and, and Keith, Dr. Oberlin, he never told me that it was a physical job. I still like it, Keith, it's okay, it's not a problem. I can't blame you, he didn't tell me I was gonna deal with crazy New Yorkers either, but okay. That said, I was breaking down. A friend of mine came over and he said to me, you know, Rob, I, I got this thing, this laser, I'm really not sure how to use it. I know if I flashed it on you, you'd feel better. 
I mean, that's where I was. We were in our infantile stages of using low-level laser. And I did it, and I felt better. And it's enabled me to conduct myself in the last 13 years as a pain-free practitioner, even with congenital torticollis. So I kind of got excited about it. And as all you guys, when you get a new toy, you start with yourself. And then, of course, you start with your husband and your wife because, you know, that there, she's right there for me and your friends and your family. And then you extend it to your extended family, your patients. And then you put it in a sports genre. It's fast, it's effective, it's painless, but it's science-based. And I'm a big proponent of taking the science, and there's a plethora of science, and integrating and implementing into Monday morning application. Because that's what we're here for, right? I mean, we get to hang out, we get to network, we get to see old friends, but we want tangible takeaways that we can implement on Monday morning. So I'm gonna try in the next 32 minutes to share some of those with you. Just out of curiosity, how many people here use a modality? Ultrasound, stim, shockwave, whatever it may be. So the bulk of people, right. And we're very happy because it assists our manual expertise. Laser is, for me, the breakthrough in the 21st century for modalities. Also, it works in concert with your hands in any other modality. So you can do it as a standalone, and you can do it synergistically with everything else that you do. Now, let's be real. You know, Simon said I'm from New York. I am from New York City, so we're real, if you will. And that means, let's talk frankly. How many people's shoulder hurts, neck hurts, lower back hurts, elbow hurts? From practice, it's tough. I'm 185 pounds. There's sometimes there's 300 pound linemen that come in. I'm really not happy about lifting their leg up. It's heavy. And they're pulling and they're in pain and it's not a lot of fun. So the heavy modality to work in place or in conjunction with my hands really changes the way that I approach treatment. So let's go over the idea of the world of non-thermal laser. And that's a big takeaway. So if there's one takeaway, you want a laser that does not heat the tissue area. Think about it. Would you heat a nerve? No way. Would you heat an acute condition? No. Would you heat a subacute condition? Probably not. Would you heat a chronic condition? Possibly. But would you use the electromagnetic transfer of energy for all the conditions that we just mentioned? And that's what Labus is, is supposed to do, to transfer electromagnetic transfer of energy. So everybody's heard the Mark Twain quote, you know, your why. Everybody knows um, the day you're born, but your why. And as chiropractors, I believe we should share our why more because you know, you don't become a brain surgeon because you had brain surgery, but you become a chiropractor because somebody has touched you. I was touched, actually, I'll be honest with you. At 18 years old, I went to a pediatric surgeon to get surgery on my neck. And he was great. You know what he told me? He said to me very simply, you have three options. You could do nothing, which is always a bad option. Option number two is I can do surgery and you'll have a scar. Option number three, this was in the 80s, you could try a chiropractor and he probably wouldn't kill you. So, went to a chiropractor. Really made experience at 18, let me tell you something. It was my cousin, you know, and he was at my bar mitzvah and all that, and it was horrible. He just didn't have any skill. 21, I went to a chiropractor, and that's when the bells went off. Here I am, finishing up my business degree and trying to go to law school, and the bells went off. So, you always need to share your why, especially with your athletes. So my why is I love what I do. Every day I can get up at six o'clock and go to work because somebody helped me. And that is my mission. I wanna help people the same way that this guy at 21 changed my life's trajectory. So laser is not new. I, it is not, you know, it is not nascent to the world. It actually was first truly discovered in 1903 when Dr. Faisit talked about it and won a Nobel Prize for treating skin tuberculosis with the ultraviolet light and smallpox with red light, just like our patented EVRL laser. So people ask me why, what's the big why? And it's real simple, number one, it's effective. It's effective by the speed of light. We're using a visible light spectrum. Number two, it's research driven. Piggyback on what Simon said, 21 out of 24 FDA clearances in America. The standard there, the gold medal winner, if you will, 
It's empirically studied. I have people come up to me at all these different symposiums and say, Rob, I used the laser, it worked really well. And it's also research driven. And I think we as chiropractors need to show the cornucopia of research that we have at our access to really prove what we do to take us to, to that next level. It's practice building. You know, if you do the same thing every day and expect a different result, everybody knows the two words, insane, if you will, that thinking our results will change. Joint health, brain health, without question. Brain health is really put it, really elevated. Everybody talks about brain. Brain, gut, gut to brain, by the way. Your gut is your second brain, as we all know. Your gut, by the way, and I'm gonna show you how to laser your gut tomorrow. Your gut has the largest nervous system in the body. It's called your enteric nervous system. So whatever you do to your brain, like in a concussion, you better also work with the gut as a little seed for tomorrow. What is laser? It's an acronym. Laser amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. It's a focused beam of photonic energy. Photons traveling in the same way coherent. So you hear a lot of people throw these words around like it's a Jeopardy game. But the bottom line is you want coherent light. Take a look at the picture. That red light is coherent. Each wave is not only the same color, but it's the same peak and valley. So it is coherent because incoherent light means it's gonna splatter all over the wall. Like if I took paint and went like that, that's incoherent. But if I took a paint gun and shot it at the wall, it would be coherent. Coherent light is extremely effective, much more so than incoherent light. So if someone were to talk about a laser, you want first, one of your first questions would be, is it coherent light? So what is non-thermal low-level laser? You've heard the terms. It's photobiomodulation. It's low-intensity light therapy. Here's the takeaway. It's photochemical and not photothermal. So when I see you at the booth and you guys say, hi, how do I like my coffee? You should also say photochemical, not photothermal. The light triggers biochemical changes within the cells. How do I compare it? Everybody knows what photosynthesis is, right? Even our patients. It's photosynthesis of the body. We shine the light into the body, chromophores absorb the light and stimulate a cascade. As we all know, the body's all interconnected. So we're able to communicate through energy impulses and up levels of energy, electromagnetic transfer of energy. So what are the five components that really are integral to benefit outcome? Number one, it's wavelength oriented, everybody. Each wavelength has a different, unique set of properties and functions. So you wanna ask what wavelength is it and what comes with the wavelengths. So the more common wavelengths that you wanna utilize is 405, which is in the violet light spectrum, 530, which is in a green light spectrum, and 635, 632 to 635, which is in the red light spectrum. When you get to higher levels and higher wavelengths, they now become infrared vastly different outcomes and typically have to heat the tissue, which you guys indicated you really don't want to do. You do prefer electromagnetic transfer of energy. The dosage, why do we need a lot of power? I paused, hoping somebody would give me an answer. Why do we need a lot of power? We don't, we need absorption. It's all about absorption. So we need just enough power to allow the body to do its job and absorb it. Too much power? Larger wavelength, heat. So we don't need a lot of a large dosage of power. The delivery mechanism, we talked about that before. We talked about it in coherent light. Movement, you'll see that when I laser somebody and they lasered a couple people before, you wanna move the laser. You constantly wanna move. You want the body to move. You wanna get that lateral spinal phenomenon track moving. And lastly, pulsed. Pulsed is a critical element because if it's constant, you have the ability to heat the area when it's pulsed. You're never going to get anything near a hormetic threshold and or heat. Are we good so far? You guys look enthusiastic. I was going to go get some cappuccino for everybody and get you guys going. So red lasers, violet lasers. What does a red laser do? It's a modulator. It increases energy and this dissipates energy if it's too high. It promotes energy through the stimulation of mitochondria. Red light has an anti-inflammatory effect. It enhances ATP production, protein synthesis with pain reduction. It creates improvement in collagen formation and wound healing. It reduces pain and muscle spasm while increasing strength and range of motion. It balances cell to cell 
communication. So that's what a 635 nanometer red light will do. When you compare and contrast that with a violet light, it's vastly different. First of all, violet light is a 405 nanometer wavelength, but it has quick physiological outcomes. So I love my violet light. We started with a red light, we added a violet light. Here's the skinny on the violet light. Not only does it work with the parasympathetic nervous system, the red light works with the sympathetic nervous system. So when you combine the two wavelengths, that's right, you get a homeostasis and a balancing of the autonomic nervous system. The violet light works in a shorter period of time, but it's antimicrobial, it's antibacterial, it's antifungal, it's antiviral. So one from a nutrition and a functional medicine aspect, it's now killing bad bacteria, funguses, and the like. But from a sports complex, if you think that bacteria isn't an issue, we are now there grossly mistaken because bacteria is a major issue in the skin. As a matter of fact, we're gonna talk about lower back and we're gonna have a lower back example here. And we're gonna talk about how the number one reason for disc injuries is the translocation of bacteria in your body. I'll even give you a little skinny. 52% of people when they were studied for discal injuries had a bacterial infection. Now that doesn't mean that it didn't come from too much flexion, too much pressure, all the other associated things. But right there, now I did notice everybody, I'm up here, everybody took a look and go, wait a minute, that's a game changing effect, it is. So we'll get to that in a moment. By the way, the violet light, great for immune function. Any of your athletes get COVID? Any of your athletes can have long COVID? Any of your patients, any of your family members? Yeah, right? So what do you do for long COVID? There's, no, no, that's not my answer. I don't like that, but that was good. It was honest. Well, I'll share you. I'll be very happy if you come up and share a long COVID protocol. I've been using the laser because let's think about it. What's the number one thing in long COVID? What's the number one symptom? Low energy. Low energy, fatigue because your mitochondria shuts off. It's called cellular danger response. It's now ineffective. So it's a switch. Why does that happen? It happens because a mitochondria comes from bacteria. It has origins in bacteria and actually communicates with our gut. Its number one function is to produce ATP. We all know that effectively. But its second function is to support the innate immune system. So when your body's drained and your immune system is drained like in COVID, your mitochondria senses this energy drain and says, wait a minute, I need to shut off my power producing packs and I need to go help the innate immune system and we shut off our mitochondria. So, okay, it's a switch off. Is it a switch on? No, it's three switches in a cycle to turn back on. The most effective tool I've used to turn on a mitochondria is a non-thermal laser, which enables you to stimulate the mitochondrial complexes. Yet with a nutrition protocol, you're now gonna have a vastly different practice. I should know, because remember in March of 2020, in New York, remember those pictures? That's six blocks from where I live. Everybody got sick. There was no way to turn. So I had to come up with these protocols, both nutritionally and both with the laser to help people. So if you're interested, Simon's great, he'll give you the protocol. I have a video that's associated with how to use the laser and I have a nutrition protocol to share with you. That said, the most versatile healthcare tool of the 21st century is the idea of integrating low level laser into your sports practice. So what are some of the therapeutic biological effects? Well, rapid cell growth. Who wouldn't want an athlete to have better cell growth? Faster wound healing, you know, athletes get wounds. Increased metabolic activity, just what we talked about, based at ATP production. Reduced fibrous tissue formation. It allows for fibroblastic proliferation, so you're allowed for parallel collagen laying down. So if you were to use an instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, you would want to do that with low-level laser. Anti-inflammatory action. I have a slide that I'll show you, but here it is in a nutshell. It shows that it decreases prostaglandin 2, PLCA2, all these fancy things. But here's the big takeaway. Has anyone ever heard of what an interleukin does? Interleukins, there's 17 interleukins in the body. This is at a chemotaxis level. Three to four of them 
are anti-inflammatory, the bulk of pro-inflammatory. The key anti-inflammatory interleukin is interleukin 10. Laser turns on the anti-inflammatory interleukin, but shuts off all the pro-inflammatory interleukins like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, interleukin 8, and TNF alpha. So when you utilize a laser, it's interesting, it works at the cellular level, and you can prove it through blood serum draws, which are extraordinarily objective. So stem cells seem to help in repair from low level laser. We talked about a healthy immune system, and there is a body contour aspect to it. Lower ATP levels are leading to hypersensitivity and chronic widespread pain. Most people look at the widespread pain and say it's injury at the level, but it's really the lack of ATP. And again, that's where the laser can put its hat on, allowing the mitochondria to be efficient at ATP production while also not allowing it to generate a lot of exhaust gas, which is reactive oxygen species. How are we doing so far, everybody? We're okay, I got a couple of thumbs up. Are we good? Yes, sir. Do you, do you need a joke? Yeah. You, want, you want a joke? I think sometimes, to be honest with you, the reasons that people look at me funny is you guys think I have an accent. I don't see it or hear it, but it's okay. So I had a new patient come and he came in one time. And it was one of the weekends that I wasn't traveling to lecture. And I was with my beautiful wife in the back. And we were at a lovely, fine restaurant. It was outstanding. And in comes this guy, and he's you know about my age, and he's with a young lady who didn't know it was a fine restaurant, so she wasn't dressed appropriately. <laughs> if I can, am I allowed to take a little, uh, right? She was three pounds of potato on a two pound bag. <laughs> so it was one of those deals. And then he comes in, and I, for some reason, my wife was mad at me about this. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I didn't have anything to do with it, you know? And he, com he comes over to me, so of course it's gonna get worse, and he says, Dr. Rob, I took your advice and that's why I'm with this beautiful young lady. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, right? So my wife is trying to kick me under the table because she's now really annoyed. So I said to him, what pray tell do you think I said? He said, you told me if I'd feel better if I got a hot mama. And I'm like, man, I got an accent. I said, I think you got a heart murmur. Go see the medical doctor. <laughs> I figured that would break you guys up. So laser energy does fuel the mitochondria. Interestingly enough, when we talk about energy, we're looking at the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is the laser sends photons into the area to stimulate electrons in this cycle in the cell to go to the next level. So it's allowing it to bounce and communicate. So we're going back to high school physics, high school chemistry when we talk about it. So interestingly enough, non-thermal laser actually fits real nice and tight in the visible light part of the electromagnetic energy spectrum. In that, let's take a look. If you take a clear look, you can look at 830 nanometers. It's about 1.5 electron volts. 635 nanometers is almost two volts. 532 is 2.33 volts. 405 is three volts. Let's call it three electron volts. So 405 has about 70 to 100% more electronic voltage than 830. How many electron volts do you think you need to allow for the electron to bounce from cell to cell to get cellular communication and upregulation of mitochondria. Anybody know? It's 1.7. So if you have a infrared wavelength, which is 830, you're getting no electron volts. You're getting no mitochondria conversation. You're just using heat as a source, which if that's what you want, kumbaya, but that's not what I'm looking for because Energy will transfer, power heats. So increasing power does not change the electron voltage. Again, you need about a minimum of 1.7 electron volts, so you have to have a wavelength below 729. For me, I wouldn't use a wavelength over 660. I'm letting that settle, because I know I get that question all the time. What's the difference? Can you prove it? Et cetera, et cetera. 
So what is photochemistry? The ability of sending a photon in to have chemical reactions in that when molecules absorb visible or ultraviolet light, they become electronically excited, they bounce. You cannot achieve this with infrared or a thermal laser. That's not Rob's data, that's the data. So he's also the skinny. This was a 1500 article research. You guys are research oriented in that they tested if you used actually a LED and or a laser with an infrared. And you know what they found out? That that infrared is actually so deleterious, it wipes out virtually any benefit you have from a red laser. So it's kind of like Simon and I go in to do some work when we're doing construction, and right behind us is the guy with the blowtorch just blowing up what we did because of the heat and tearing it down. And that was an extensive research. So probably my favorite study right here when we talk about good quality, low level lasers. So here we have bilateral tricompartment study with older individuals who need a joint replacement. So that's a horrific outcome, joint replacement. In that the left side got a sham laser and physiotherapy. So it went from 70 to 15. Physiotherapy works, we all know that. The right side, had physiotherapy and true low level laser. 69 out of 70 people did not need a joint replacement at that time. So physiotherapy worked, but when you added laser, it was 15 times more effective. 69 out of 70 people. Now in America, Medicare, our health insurance for people over 65, covers joint replacement. They just line them up and go. Now I know it's different because we're from all different parts of the world. Interesting, look at the outcomes. The data speaks for itself. This probably speaks to all of you. This was an international 2016 meeting. So these were elite athletes. They used low level laser therapy on some of the athletes. They said it was an unfair advantage that they want to ban true low level non-thermal laser from the athletes who do it because it would give them advantage equivalent to steroids. So they would either have to get everybody to have the laser or nobody to have the laser at an elite level. Now, you know, if you think about it, I'm a basketball guy. That's my sport. That's what I like to watch. With all due respect to everybody's football, sorry, Simon, soccer. Um, if LeBron James walks in and I walk in and then my dad who's 92 years old with like 18 different ailments, but he's gone. He's, you know, he's the fusion man. Who's mitochondria? is going to respond best to the stimuli. LeBron James, Messi, whoever. I'm probably second, because I'm in my 50s and I'm trying to stay healthy, and my dad's older at 92. No surprise there, an unfair advantage. Interesting, adding low level laser, increased vitamin D levels and magnesium levels. Vitamin D is a virtuoso of sorts. It allows for a swath of sport performing functions and without question, vitamin D is a critical element for overall muscle building, mus decreasing musculoskeletal injuries. Who would want their athletes to have a higher vitamin D level? Multitude of studies have shown that athletes with low vitamin D levels have a lot of musculoskeletal injuries and susceptible to sports injuries. And magnesium is the same thing, it's a key enzyme, 320 enzymatic reactions in magnesium. Laser enabled the body to absorb it better. There's an efficiency for red non-thermal laser for post-operative pain management. So after pain, a lot of our athletes, what? We have, what, meniscus injuries, ACL injuries, and the like. Laser has pain relief. The red light application decreased reactive oxygen levels and CLAP as well. Laser was used to help with wound healing. It actually affected 100 different, 111, excuse me, different gene expressions in the athlete's body. And to make sense of this wound healing, it basically showed of a 14, 21, and 28 day period that it increased fibroblastic proliferation versus non-thermal non laser applications. So everybody wants fibroblastic proliferation to allow for collagen laying down, and of course, as I said before, in a parallel fashion. 
So in addition to that, it, it increased IGF-1 and decreased TGF-beta. Here's a slide that I want to talk about. I want to get to some questions. The red laser significantly raised interleukin-10. That is an anti-inflammatory interleukin. And it decreased, as I said before, interleukin-6, interleukin-8, interleukin-1-beta, and TNF-alpha. Here's the big takeaway. Does everybody know what microglial cells are? Microglial cells are the macrophages of your central nervous system. When you're in M1, you're in a pro-inflammatory state, and your vacuum cleaner, your microglials, are sucking up too much of your central nervous system. It's one of the key elements to neural degenerative disease and damage to brain. Do you know when you're in an M1 microglial phase? Post-concussion. Laser flicks the switch from an M1 to an M2. M2 means that you modulated down your microglial cells and you just clean up what you're supposed to and you walk out the door. Which athlete is most susceptible to not being able to convert from M1 to M2? Males or females? Females, number one concussion athlete. The biggest reasons why women respond poorer to concussion treatment is the inability for them to switch from an M1 to M2. They have an estrogen beta uh, receptor that men don't have. Obviously men and women are different, hormonally speaking, amongst other things. And they're not able to. Laser's able to switch from an M1 to an M2. Therefore, you can get different outcomes with concussion. Also helps the 630 uh, nanometer laser, the red light, also shown to help with vascular structure injuries. This is a great study on non-thermal laser regulating the modulation of, of extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix, everything outside the bone, everything that attaches to the bone, cartilage, ligaments, tendons, and the good old fascia, right? Fascia, which is an intracellular communicator. Fascia, which is the saran wrap of the body. Fascia, which is your body's wetsuit, has more nerve endings than any other part of your body. Fascia, which allows for tensegrity. All these extracellular matrix properties, which are very common in sports injuries and soft tissue injuries. What's the number one injury in uh, sports? Isn't it like an ankle sprain? Isn't it the most recurrent also? Isn't it 80% reoccurrent? What is that reoccurrence rate attributed to? Structural damage at the soft tissue level leading to false and proprioception. So they keep inverting and keep inverting, if you will, the most common ankle injury is an inversion, anterior tile of fibular ligament. And here's where you come in, use it, utilizing laser, laser at the area of injury, and the laser also to increase proprioception in the brain. So let's look at the remodeling of the extracellular matrix. Number one, it increases protein synthesis and decreases protein breaking down. So it's flicking the healing switch at a cellular level. It also downregulates those diverse inflammatory cytokines. So it decreases the damage stage by decreasing the M1 macrophages and M1 microglials, neutrophils, and the like and it stimulates the repair phase, increasing the M2 macrophages and M2 microglials. You guys doing all right so far? Lunch is really free, I heard. <laughs> yeah. So it's demo time. So instead of doing a demo in front of everybody, and I'm happy to do a demo in front of everybody with the five minutes that we have left, I'm gonna invite everybody to come to the booth, and I'm happy to demo them in between lunch and for the rest of the day. You pick it. I'll do it, no problem, I'm happy. Remember guys, I am a chiropractor. I have 24 years experience, I promise I won't hurt you. <laughs> so, the first five people to sign up for any kind of treatment or case study, we were able to bring some of my books to customs. I have a best-selling book on Amazon, it's called Immune Reboot. I wrote it in reference to, obviously, building the immune system, building a robust immune system. There is low-level laser in there, if anybody's interested. That's how they get it. We got five books to give away. And if anybody wants to contact me, follow me on social media, we'll be doing some lives in a little while. I know you guys are all social media um, savvy. I'm there for you. 
And I say four minutes for questions. Don't be shy. I know once you break the seal, the first question will start the whole panacea of questions. Yes, sir. The, um, load, the low level laser, the, the spectrum of light that, it's, that you're operating in and, and picking and choosing, what's the difference in that compared to just simply sunlight? It, there, there's old, in old healing ways, you would say there was um, clinics that would just be putting people into sunlight and having health outcomes from that. Is, is this a bit more of a precision or is there any validity to just general sunlight? It's a, it's more did, of your opinion. did everybody hear his question? Yeah. So essentially he said, when did you decide on these aspects of light are they aspects of sunlight and would sunlight help? Is that fair? Yeah. Sunlight will definitely help. We all know that. Sunlight enables us 15 minutes of sunlight with the UV of three allows us to have a release of vitamin D. Of course, these are aspects of the visible light spectrum, very precisely picked for their functions. Of course, we could, low level laser means not a lot of power. Non-thermal laser really refers to the idea of electromagnetic transfer of energy and the stimulation of the mitochondria. That's the secret sauce, everybody. The stimulation of the I got you. The stimulation of the mitochondria. And here's the other secret sauce: the switching on of specific health switches and the shutting down of pro-inflammatory switches. You're looking at something that affects an objective finding which is blood markers. Who wouldn't want to have every patient to have that ability to have better mitochondria? Well, you, know, you said your number one thing you noticed with long COVID, mitochondrial dysfunction. Hey, what's one of the biggest things? Joker, everybody watched the NBA Finals, right? He can't come out of the game. He's got to go 42 to 48 minutes. If he comes out of the game, the whole thing falls apart, right? Look at the Sixers. I'm using different teams. Look at Embiid, the moment he comes out of the game, it's all over. It, they look like my high school team, and they have other guys. So, in able to stimulate the mitochondria is a performance. Enable to shut the, the switches off of inflammation, turn on the health promoting switches. That's longevity, everybody. There's a guy called Mark Hyman and Peter Tia. They have these best selling books, and they talk about longevity. It's turning off the health switches of inflammation and turning on the health promoting switches. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask you, some of these thermal lasers, especially red lasers, have two wavelengths, two different wavelengths. And you do something called a swell test, which means like you basically indicate to those, the first thing I think a lot of it is insurance, because you have two lasers because you create heat and they can give danger to the eye, you have to wear protection goggles, yeah? And so, so what do you do before you do a treatment? You take a swell test to basically test the sensitivity of the patient, how far you can tolerate the heat. And then what you do, you basically then like you know we determine that for this individual patient because every patient is different. And how can you basically with a low level laser, where you don't use a swell test, how can you determine that it's better? I really don't understand that. Because what do you do often with a so swell test? With I'm a swell test you precisely you can say, okay, you can tolerate so much. This is a point I can go to and you say, okay, that's what I accept, you know. And then they go then you go lower than the threshold, you know. And then you give a dose, which is determined. You give a laser dose, and then you stop again. You, uh, so the, you get a heat treatment as well. You know, you know, I know you don't have a heat treatment, but sometimes heat treatment is not a bad thing, you know? I'm going to extrapolate what you said. So I think I got it. So I don't use a laser to generate heat because I found, again, in my professional and my personal opinion, that a heat generating laser is deleterious to tissues. You want one with electromagnetic transfer of energy. But the idea of goggles, we understand. Whereas, I'll just say in the acronia laser, you don't need to wear goggles because it's a class two and your eyes are protected from the blink. Would I put goggles on? Listen, if I'm gonna put it in his face, I live in New York, I don't want anybody saying that they got a gray hair because I laser them, I put the goggles on. Right? You understand what I'm trying to say? So I hope I was able to answer your question. I don't use a hot laser, so I don't, I don't use that same test as you. Yes, ma'am. Colleague, how are you? I'm in New York State. Um, what are the qualifications to apply the laser? Is it a practitioner that has to do it? Can you get a chiropractic 
You mean, could I have my staff do it? So my staff could do it. Does my staff do it? No, because I charge extra for it, and I figure if there's an associated charge, the doctor should be at least be present, but you could, and you could rent it to other people out of a rental business. So you can, you can only buy it though. So I'll hold hands with that too. I know I saw a few other hands. Don't be shy, I thought that was a good answer. So we're good? Oh. Okay, so we're going to break for lunch now, um, and we're going to divide.